Hey guys, new video here. It's been a while since we made one. Uh, I've been playing too much, you know, lots to do still in the game. Um, and so I just want to talk about uh, the intermediate mapping, right? So you've gotten past the beginning stages. Uh, the first video was really popular about like if you're a new player, you know, you're gonna like start rolling your maps, how should you do it, things to focus on. And this one will just be um, a, a little bit above that. It'll still be like, you know, if you play the game for a long time, you don't need to really watch this, but maybe it'll offer some insight on like little tidbits that, uh, you know, uh, you, you don't really think about from the day to day, right? So let's just say that you know uh, now how to ouch and like corrupt your maps and all that good stuff. So what do you do next, right? And before we talk about anything, we gotta talk about what you need to do before you start going kind of ham, um, because there's like prerequisites, right? So for example, you know, you wouldn't corrupt your map before you used an alchemy on it, right? And you wouldn't like chisel uh, and then directly uh, corrupt it without using alchemy, like things like that, right? There's an order of operations. So given that you've done all the stuff in the previous video the first thing that you need to do is get this number uh, to level eight now what is this number this is awakening level eight you can watch like a whole host of other youtube videos uh, about how to get your watchstone socketed basically all the watchstones or using ivory watchstones in one region will give you one level okay there's eight regions for eight levels and so when you hover over it, there's like this grayed out text. It's kind of weird that's grayed out because usually grayed out means it doesn't work. But in this instance, um, that text right there at the current time of whatever awakening level you have is the bonuses that um, it is giving you, okay? So the most important uh, rule, the rule number one after you're done with like the beginner map stuff is you need to get awakening eight, okay? It is, uh, I would say the age old question, is it worth it to do this or that? The the answer is yes, You have. it is worth it if you have Awakening 8. You cannot lose money on the maps if you have the Awakening Level 8 uh, in this middle. So get all the Watchstones, buy the Ivory Watchstones if you want to. You can buy like, you can put in like duplicate Ivory Watchstones, so just like buy like the, the cheapest ones if you want. And once you get Awakening 8, you can look at the bonuses and see the crazy effects that you get, okay? So I would say uh, spam mapping is not worth it until you get all the numbers here maxed out. And then also, to some extent, you're going to want to max out these, okay? But this is number one priority before we talk about anything else. And the reason for that is because um, if we look at the first few lines, it doesn't really, like, it, it doesn't seem like much, right? Because like, the, the more effective modifiers, it does make the maps more scary, uh, right? But it also influences the good mods, right? So most importantly, importantly things like beyond things like pack size um, quantity all that good stuff so by doing this um, and getting to those next percentages you are just dropping more you have more monsters in the map right and then as you know like if you track your returns from map to map you're not going to make much but from a, a long-term like tracking standpoint like if you have excellence and you track your track your tabs you're gonna make you know 30 40 50 exalts in the dump tabs let's say you play like eight hours a day right uh, on awakening and that's that's been tested across different leagues that's been tested this league and so you will just make so much so get this number up the next one the um drop an additional connected map doesn't really matter although uh as a intermediate mapper you can still sell maps i personally don't do it anymore because it's annoying doing um you know one map trades at a time but things like you know dessert spring and like other other one of these maps that like aren't easily uh, obtainable for some people right people are still paying like 10 12 13 c for these so if you uh care about that amount of c then it is worth going uh after you know killing the map ops uh the map um bosses if you can because some of the connecting maps, if you are on Awakening 8, can sell for something, okay? Personally, I think you'll move away from this really quickly because it's super annoying to sell the maps, but, you know, 10 C at a time, and if you bulk it up and you sell, you know, so let's say someone really loves uh, a certain map that's selling well, someone really loves Dessert Spring for some reason, um, I don't know why they would, but let's say they want to buy 10 of them at a time, right? Then you're like looking at almost, uh, you, you know, let's say like two thirds of an exalt, you know, things like that, uh, all at once. So there's different ways you can look at it there. Another another thing to look at, and this one is actually probably uh, one of the biggest things, and it's the chance of a Shaper or an Elder uh, Jardian map, okay? And this is kind of crazy because the 4% chance, um, it's not exactly 8%, right? Because the chance of you not getting a map is like 0.96 times 0.96, which is like just under 8%, I think, right? So, but let's just say for, for ease of, um, of math, we're going to say it's 8% chance to drop uh, either a um, elder or a shaper jari map and you can drop both um, but let's just say it's eight percent chance so what this means um, to put it in like pretty simple numbers is if you run a hundred maps you're going to drop eight of these let's just put 
the cost of a fragment you know like like minnow minotaur fragments are like 50c uh some of the other ones are a little bit less you know 30 to 40c but let's just average it out to like i don't know let's be conservative and say like 30c right because some of the um the elder fragments right from the eradicator purifier things like this can sell for a little bit more in bulk as well and so let's just say it's 30c okay conservative numbers that means if you run 100 maps uh you're gonna get eight of these boss drops and if you can kill the boss uh then you sell the fragment that's about 240c 240c divided by 100 is uh 2.4c okay why is this number important the number is important because when you go to the map device here, uh, this map device, if you look at the cost, right? 2.4C pretty much covers like fortune favors, the brave, you wanna use that, it covers essence, it covers energy, it pretty much covers domination, bloodlines, um, you know, a little more than half of Nemesis, and then like half of, um, half of Beyond and almost half of Legion, right? So uh, a question that uh, like every streamer gets a lot is which map mods are worth running. And I will actually go over all these map mods in a little bit, but you can kind of see that just from this awakening bonus in the middle, that 4%, you are basically covering a lot of the map mods. Okay, that's very important because then when you when you compare it like this, you know that, wow, okay, am I only dropping that? No, you're only dropping that 4% chance for each one, right? So you take all the stuff you're making in the map, you know, the other things that can drop from the boss, for example, one like I talked about five minutes ago, um, maps that you might be able to sell if they're like the correct tier and the correct, um, the correct red maps and then we also have um you know we have like base types we have also chances of like synthesized maps dropping right synthesis maps uh can go for like 60 plus c for the normie ones right so like altered you know twisted different distant memories because like all the all the synthesized maps um what they can do is uh they can draw you a circle rings right circle of anguish guilt um all, all like well, circle of guilt and uh circ and the herald of ice one i think and the herald of ass one um uh, those are probably the biggest ones but every time you ID one of those and they do drop quite frequently more frequently than the the, the little white mask thingy or the um, storm's gift like these things can be I've sold some for like 20 30 exalts right if they are the correct rules um, so it is it is a very fun map to run but of course you can always sell it for uh, for once again 60 C for the normal ones and a cortex is almost three exalts I think cortex at, at the time of this video is about 350 to 400 C somewhere around there and uh, there's been days where I drop like two or three Cortexes, right? And there's been days when like you can find a couple Cortexes from the master mission if you encounter her, uh, or you know if you if you uh, load up one of these Atlas. Uh, one of these Atlas missions from from Zaba, then you know uh, after the way that works is um, when you talk to her you and Atlas? you click on Atlas mission, the moment you put in a map and you activate, once the portal opens, you can How talk you to her Atlas? and click on purchase items, okay? And then this will refresh the moment the map opens. You do not have to finish the mission inside the map. You don't even need to talk to the girl inside of the map. All you gotta do yeah, is the yeah. moment you click on Atlas mission, you put in the map, activate, and then once the first portal opens, you'll click on purchase items, okay? Th this won't be uh, available inside the map. So uh, you'll do that and then you'll see a refresh. So check for synthesis maps. Um, the uh, Shaper uh, Jardian maps, those are, I think those maps are at least like 30, 30 C, 40 C maybe for Minnow. Um, so just like, just like mouse over those and usually she sells them for, I think it's like 25 C. So you can make like, you know, a few C there or you can run them and sell the fragment for more. Okay, the fragments are like 40, 50 um, uh, plus C. So definitely check your uh, Zaba missions here. And so let's let's keep going on with this. So we've talked about the four percent chance for elder and shaper jardin maps. How important that is. Um, Atlas Atlas bases and like the unique items are very interesting. Atlas bases are basically like the things that drop in specific like little quadrants or octants and things. Um, and so that that's like at this point like not that important. But early on, you can get some nice eye level ones. You can get some uh, some things that will sell just the the base, right? But that requires a little price check and stuff, and that's outside of the scope of this video. Um, but I will talk about the unique items. Okay, that eight percent chance for a unique item is basically a um, singular incubator. If you don't know what singular incubators are, there's something from a legion where you get a number of kills and uh, a random item will pop up. It can be league specific or non league specific. Most of the time, it will be something like a like a, an Iron Heart or like a you know like a Lactaniel Caress or like some, some Wanderlust, some garbage item, right? But uh, I have dropped a headhunter from this from a white beach map. Uh, it was a tier one 
unrolled it didn't have ouch on it because i was just testing out infernal blow um i went into a white beach map tier one unrolled no nemesis no nothing and i killed the boss it was a double boss and one of them dropped a header and so it can it can drop any leak specific it cannot drop locked um uniques for example if you kill a map boss you'll never drop a void force you'll never drop a star force you'll never drop a owls uh amulet you know you, you won't get these things <laughs> But you can drop things like Headhunter and other League specific, so that's that's kind of important. Um, so it can be big money. the The way that you know that this is um, the one from the boss is that it will be identified. So most people have like an identified filter um, on their uh, loot filter to show all identified uniques. Because what if it's corrupted? What if it like you know like for this purpose? So if you kill a boss and an identified unique drops you know that that is exactly the one that was from the eight percent the only other way that an identified unique can drop um, from that map boss is if you're running a sextant that's called unid'd it's an unid'd uh, sextant which says um like like maps that are id drop identified items right but if you're but most people aren't running that sextant or if they are they're running unid'd maps so it wouldn't happen so what that means is that um, you you know that that's the case, right? And so pay attention to this because I think you'll find that um, by spamming down maps, you're gonna see so many of these uniques drop. And sometimes it like from map to map, you're not gonna make anything, but in the long run, you will drop some pretty good stuff, right? And there's a lot of uniques out there right now that are worth like more than like uh, you know, one or two exalts. So it's worth paying attention to. The map currency one is uh, not as important. It's, it's more important early on because you get chisels, you know, you get the sextants and stuff. Awakened sextants are becoming quite expensive because the, the pool of mods is really good. So if you drop, let's say, three awakened sextants, uh, that, that's basically 15C from the boss. And this league, you know, um, I think as Lee gets long, uh, gets a little bit, you know, in the next few weeks or so, as people like fill out all their atlases and they're really spamming and testing out new things, getting their characters to 100, running a lot of maps, uh, that those awakened sex might even go even higher in price. So it's pretty crazy, and obviously you can use them yourself uh, if you want. And then also the um, the chance of getting influence items now. This is like. Now there's like so many, but it is worth IDing some of them because um, I won't go over that in this video because there's a, I don't really know much about the crafting, but there is a lot of things you can mix and match with those items that people are doing a lot of crafting. So those are worth uh, checking out, okay? So Awakening 8, we've talked about this, and uh, so, so this is number one priority before you do anything else, okay? The number two priority is uh, you are going to go ahead and look at the map mods, okay? So you, remember, you, this is assuming you've already done the beginner video, you have all your maps rolled, right? The, the only other thing that you can do after you roll your maps pretty much, if you don't want to get into some crazy like ivory watchstone stuff, um, is you will add two things, right? You'll add a map device. Uh, modifier and then you will add a master, right? You have five masters to choose from. The map device, let's just go over this. This one is garbage uh, unless there's a challenge. So you do this 30 times. For this one, for the challenge, all you gotta do is open the map. You don't need to go into the map at all. So like you get like 30 white maps and you spend uh, like 90 C, I think for the challenge. You just open 30 white maps with fortune favors of brave, your challenge is done. It just picks one from random and usually it's gonna be garbage. Essence, I do not feel it's worth running because I skipped the Essence uh, sextant. And so uh, Essence is like, there are expensive ones. For example, if you bulk them up, you can sell, uh, you can go to Peewee Ninja and see some of the, the deafening essences go for quite a bit, such I think Rage is very important. But you're not gonna, in the amount of time it takes to, to stack up a deafening or to get a lucky deafening or to get like a, what else is selling in bulk, like horror or like some other stuff like this, it's not really worth the time because by running any other mod, you will outpace the gains from Essence. So um, if you're solo self found, you know, you might run Essence because you need some, you know, uh, you need some of the stuff. But this is, uh, I would say in a trade league, not worth running. Okay, let's talk about Anarchy. Anarchy is just like three exiles, okay? And if you ever want to know what these do, when you hover the mouse over, it'll tell you. Anarchy, I don't believe is worth doing because uh, most of the time, even with the counterplay of the, um, I don't even know if the, the Rogue Exile section is still in the game, but even with that, when I was testing it, it's so garbage, right? I guess like the best thing they can drop is like a tabula a lot of the time, right? But that's one divine. And these, these guys have like compared to the other content in the game that you can add, they are really, really bad, okay? Because, and for 2C, that's like one third of a Legion. A uh, Legion will like blow this out of the water, okay? So I personally would never run uh, Anarchy. Domination is really good because Domination is, um, 
has like a little bit of counterplay with the goal. The goal Raven Mask will buff the shrine effect, I believe, by 75%, and you'll get like three shrines. Um, if you have if you have something like the the sextant, like Gloom Shrine or Resounding Shrine, it can be even more. And Domination usually has a huge pack of mobs around it, um, except for unless you're in certain locations. There are certain maps, like for example, Waterways and Channies, uh, where one of the shrines will have no monsters. But this map mod right here, I would say is actually worth considering, even if you don't have a goal, because it's kind of like a, like a, like a mid-range uh, role where like you can't really go wrong with it. It makes the map a lot more fun. Um, the Domination mobs themselves and the stuff added, I don't know if it, it will like, always cover the 3c in terms of like you know like number of mobs added um I, I don't think those mobs will drop 3c because the shrines don't actually give you any money but it is really fun and obviously because you overall you can't lose money on the maps um this can make your enjoyment of the game better so like you, you know do, playing more is is quantity right so um this is i would actually recommend domination try out Okay, Bloodlines has always been recommended for map drops, but starting this league, like ex this expansion forward, you can't run out of maps. You're going to have thousands and thousands of extra maps uh, eventually. So I don't think that this is that good anymore because the extra monster packs, um, it, it, it's not really like noticeable in the map, right? And even if you have the sextant that says like more monster, magic monster pack size, I don't think it's noticeable enough. And I don't think maps are valuable enough to, to really run this one, okay? Nemesis is for headhunter chancing. Uh, and also Nemesis is fun if you want to like try your luck at just dropping something, uh, maybe a headhunter, but also five additional rare monsters. This is essentially a sextant roll and it is a very common sextant roll uh, that you can get. Obviously those monsters can't drop headhunter, but the Nemesis I would really only use if you're Ancient Orbing or uh, chancing a Headhunter, okay? That, that, that's it. I mean, sometimes for fun, if you, if you run the same map all day and you just want to like spam it down and, and try to drop one at the end of the league, that's fine too. But for the purposes of spamming maps and, and making the muns, I guess Nemesis is like, mm, it, it's like kind of B tier, right? Now, let's talk about these two. These are the two big ones. And um, for me personally, because my characters are like map juicers, I only run Beyond, okay? Beyond, basically what it does is um, when you kill a monster, it has a chance of spawning a little portal. Enough portal spawn, a bigger monster pops out. Enough portal spawn again, a boss pops out, and it could be, and as, as we know, the magic, rare, and the uniques drop more than white monsters, and beyond monsters that spawn in cannot be normal monsters. So overall, um, good amount of exalts, good amount of loot. Um, so this is, this is like weird because people look at the 5C cost, and if you're not juicing your maps in other ways, for example, you know, alch corrupting, sextanting, um, and then, you know, uh, using like master sometimes or using prophecies, you're not gonna get as much out of it, right? So for beyond, I would say that this this mod requires the most counterplay. You need to have um, the sextants, and sometimes you need to reroll sextants into more monsters, right? From so for example, a sextant that's like technically good is the 30% magic pack size. Oh, my my delivery is here. Um, so the the one that's like magic pack size is like overall a good sextant. I wouldn't recommend a new player to re-roll that, right? However, if I'm running beyond on my maps and I'm a map juicer, I would always re-roll things like um, bodyguards, 30% uh, magic pack, um, and like, you know, tormented spirit set things, like uh, scarab things. Like those are straight, those are straight garbage for beyond, right? And that's why you'll see, sometimes see me re-roll things that are technically good with um, counterplay options, okay? So beyond, once again, have the monster sections, probably use prophecies. Um, prophecies, for example, rats, frogs, hungry storms, cursed choir, uh, these things, anything that adds monsters is good for beyond because those monsters themselves can spawn beyond. And then if they're close by other monsters, then it's more portal chance, okay? So you just want a lot of monsters and preferably if you really want to go like next level counterplay, you you run beyond with your indoor maps, okay? Because outdoor maps are pretty garbage um, without the rats or the um, frogs or the choir or the swarm uh, proccing, right? Indoor maps are insane. Like even without a prophecy proccing, even like with a badly rolled indoor map, it is better than an outdoor map, okay? So, so there's a lot of things to talk about with Beyond, but I'll try to keep this video a little bit shorter. Um, and then also remember, Beyond gets multiplied by the Awakening bonus, that 24% increase effect. And if you have double Beyond, you know, you have a Beyond Sextant, then it gets even crazier. 
so that's that's beyond um then we have legion now legion you, you make a lot of money a lot of money off uh, overall because if i were to rank the exalt drop tier list in terms of like this league if i do all the content to the best of my ability which one drops the most exalts metamorph is number one tawny's lab and um and metamorphs in maps drop the most exalts that i've that i've encountered and a lot of people can corroborate this number two for me would probably be legion uh legion legion as a as a league content probably drops the second most exalts so although the price tag is very steep in the long run it's back loaded selling your templars for like 140 uh selling your merit cat for like 200 something all of this back loaded money will more than cover the cost of the legion and remember what i talked about earlier the maps that you drop from here the bonus maps um will cover like almost half of that role anyways so you can't look at it once again you cannot look at it from a map to map standpoint you have to look at it long term a uh, question that i get a lot from people getting to juicing maps is which one do i use do i use beyond or legion if you have to ask that question, use Legion, okay? Because Beyond, once again, is only for map juicers when you have every other thing correct, okay? Sexton's Prophecies, uh, map rules, preferably indoor maps, things like that. You have to know what you're doing to use, like, the Beyond. Um, and the Beyond can actually, like, kill your character a lot, so you might want to be careful. You might want to be careful there. So Legion, I'd say, is in terms of all these map mods, I can say that Legion is, is objectively maybe the best one. Um, that's what I can say. Like just across the board for intermediate players, just run Legion, sell all the stuff, and you'll be fine. Make sure you use your incubators. Make sure you, oh, make sure you have a build that can clear everything because uh, the Legion, if you if you miss like let's say half the mobs because your build is slow, then you're gonna lose money, right? Um, a thing to know about Legion is that when you touch the pylon, purple um, tendrils will spawn on the pylon pointing a certain direction to indicate that a general has spawned. General is your um, most important target, so make sure you go for them first. And uh, sometimes the tendrils don't point the right direction if it's like a weird walled off map or like a weird like twisty turny map, so be careful there. So that's um, what I have to say about the map mods, okay? Um, in terms of other juicing, I did mention prophecies a little bit in the previous video, but I will mention them um, a little bit more now. So intermediate mappers are going to run uh, things like this. You're going to have um, Bountiful Traps. You're going to have like Plague of Rats. You're going to have a Hungering Swarm. You're going to have Curse of Choir. Okay, anything that adds monsters is fine. Uh, I'm going to go into a little bit of depth here. A Cursed Choir and a Hungering Swarm I really like uh, because they are global, meaning that they can proc on any map whatsoever, right? Um, the ones that are specific are frogs and rats, okay? Rats can only proc on indoor maps, and for some reason, Barrel Chambers is an indoor map, and Courthouse, I guess, is an indoor map, even though most areas are outside. Um, but so there's like some like w rules that are like weird, but frogs is outdoor maps. So think of like, uh, like Canyon and uh, like like Misa and things like that. But these are outdoor mats are frogs, okay? So it's kind of annoying having to match them up, but they are much better. The density of rats and frogs is, I would say two to three times at least uh, greater than the density given by choir. And if you're running beyond, then that's really important. So right now, um, though at the time of this video, they're really expensive, right? Bulk rats, bulk frogs, and even bulk choir and hungering swarm uh, and things like that are like, they're like really, really, really expensive, okay? So I don't know if I can recommend it, um, but you know, like I can guarantee you still won't lose money doing them, but it's just a hassle to trade for unless you have a prophecy dealer. And it's just like, it just feels bad to buy that much at a time, okay? Early in the league though, these are half a C to one C. And at that point, you should you should buy probably all of them. You should buy thousands because you could resell them later, right? Because you know they're going to go up. Um, so yeah, that's why I recommend for Prophecies. Bountiful Traps is good if you carry alchemies inside your inventory in the maps to roll the maps because the, the things you're looking for on a box, you should always out your boxes because you can get three rares, right? That's good. Stream of Monsters is good. Skeletons is good. Um, and then like, you know... you like all, all all the boxes are good to use an alchemy on alchemy is like 600 to one so you shouldn't be scared to use that so definitely make sure you're doing that um another thing is tempest so any of the tempests it, besides will wins is worth using at the current prices because the 30 percent quantity you get if they proc uh is going to be multiplied by this okay uh you can't like proc the f the frogs and rats with the tempest right they're like separate so just be careful um of that okay other things to do is you gotta you gotta like kind of be fast for like the intermediate juicing so uh, i'll recommend getting quad tabs right have a lot of quad tabs to dump all your stuff in and as you can see i have a lot it's kind of it's kind of pay to win right but that's just how the game is this these days make sure you are dump tabbing 
and make sure you are being efficient. Don't sell after every map. Um, you have to really embody like the high is lava. But th that I can make another video on. This is just about like how how you should be juicing your maps a little bit at the intermediate level. Okay. So we talked about prophecies. Let's talk about masters. Um, these masters are all pretty good. Einhard, like so if, if you want to like see how many maps I've done, I have 312 um Nikos, I have 291 Einhars. And a good way for you to estimate how many maps you've run is um if you have a master that you never run yet. For example, me, I don't run Nico. I don't think I've I don't think I've run a, like a single red Nico. So what you can do is you can take that because you know that it's split evenly. You can take this number, multiply by five. Because like you know, obviously I ran down my Alice, my Junes, and some of my Zabas. So you can multiply this number by five. So three hundred times five is fifteen hundred, right? Fifteen hundred is about how many masters I would have if I didn't run any of them. Okay, just as an approximation. And then we know that um, we know that the chance of getting a master after completing a map, killing a boss, is um, is forty percent, right? We don't always kill the boss if it's like reef or like lava lake or something. But uh, let's just let's just assume, right, that we do. So then you take fifteen hundred. And then that equals 0.4 times the total number of maps run, right? Because 40% chance of a master. So then you divide 1500 by 0.4. And so I, I've run at least 3000 uh, red maps this week, right? You have to like really, really run a lot of these, um, a lot of these maps to get the, the masters necessary, right? To load up. And so now the question is, which master do I use? And the answer is you should use all of them. If you put Zaba on the map, you go in there, any shape or elder map will get you like 30 C plus, right? Sometimes more if you count the drops inside the map. You will always, always make sure to check your Zaba once again um, after you run her because she could sell you a map worth like 350, 400 C or a map worth like 60 C if it's one of the other ones. And it's just kind of fun, right? If you have another, and also it's a free map. Inside, if you get like a really juiced up eight mod, um, six mod uh, map, it, it's it's another map for you to run for free that you, you are spending less time in your hideout, more time in the map. And it might be a map you really enjoy too, maybe one with Beyond. June is really good. Uh, June prophecies are going for a lot, and June's safe houses, if you can sell them, can be really expensive. Right? People are paying like one exalt per white socket. People are paying for twenty percent uh, benches. People are paying for a lot of stuff, and so the June the June missions always run those down. Um, you might this is like harder for intermediate players, and and especially for me too, because I just don't care enough about it. It is hard to learn how to move betrayal people into different houses. It's hard to know when to when to uh, like interrogate, when to you know set free, when to do rivals, when to do allies. It's confusing, so this requires you to watch some YouTube videos on how that actually works. But if you can if you can kind of game the system, and there's still a little RNG factor to it, you can make a ton of money off June. Okay. Nico, there's delving. There's lots of videos on delving. You can watch like Tuna, Crouching Tuna, or someone uh, do the delve. Delve is a huge amount of money, and um, it's it's kind of a shame you can't sell these uh, these missions. But delving uh, is like kind of like free content, um, like it's maps you don't have to roll, so you can run that. When you get full softy, you can go into the the delve and try to make some money. This one is another thing you want to watch videos on because there's things like breaking down the walls, you know, going for different um, different biomes and things like that. So it's kind of weird. Alba, lots of people don't like Alba anymore, um, but I, I think Alba is one of the best ones because double corruption and double gem corruption these days can be a stable source of like you know 10 exalts at a time sometimes right if you're getting lucky right you can you can even get like over a mirror if you uh hit the right double corruption stuff so the, the, it's free and the possibility is there you might break your items but um overall it's just a really fun room so make sure you i have a video on alba temples if you want to watch that um so that so like this is kind of weird in the game you have to watch videos for other stuff but the alba temples are really good and uh, make sure you run those and do the counterplay for the different rooms or else your temple's gonna suck then we have einhar and einhar i think is like pretty easy pretty straightforward you just kill the beast wait for him to capture him there is a little bit of counterplay i guess for like you know like different um uh like different types of maps I, I believe are conducive for spawning different things and i don't want to go into that because uh it's, it's just not worth it for this video but let's just say you, you do einhar make sure you're doing i think like was it t14 and above because then you can get the ferric tiger alphas but even if you're just running it down your your red maps uh and any which direction 
if you have Awakening 8, once again, you'll pretty much only be doing tier 14 plus. And so the expensive ones right now are things like Ferric Tiger Alphas. Um, you are going to be looking at uh, Kraychik Chimerals. You're going to be looking at Fenimal Plague Arachnid. You can go to Peewee Ninja to see what the expensive ones are. And over over time, you will make uh, very consistent exalts by adding Einhard to your map. And if you run the beast yourself, you can always jamble and, and, and get a very expensive item uh, from the Menagerie. One quick way to look at this, if you have been running Einhard, is you press your H button, you go to your bestiary, and click on this tab, Capture Beast. It'll load up right here in the Filter Beast. You can filter by all the beasts that you have, okay? And I don't have that many, because once again, you can see I don't run Einhard that much yet. Uh, so watch this. If I type in like Ferric Tiger, see, I don't have any, right? But you see how like filters for like the, the name? What about like Kraychik, right? You can, you can search by Kraychik, uh, see this? Okay, I have two Kraychik Chimerals here, just randomly. I don't run Einar missions, and I just got these from um, from the random spawns inside the maps. This is, I believe, at least two exalts right here. So you have to use a bestiary orb and capture these, right? And then so other things are like Fenimal, uh, Plague, okay, I don't have any of those, but if you've been doing this consistently, you'll probably find like 10 plus exalts in there, right? Because you can sell your Ferric Apes as well for people who want to um, jamble for the Headhunter. And so um, where's, where's the orb at? The, right here. This is like 1C from Einhar in the Menagerie. You have to like, you have to do this. You um, you search for your beast. So my Kraychik Chimeral right here. I'm going to right click the orb. I left click on the beast and it's gone. See, these two are now sellable and I'm going to put these in my tab. And then I can um, list them as whatever people, and then you can search on the Peewee Trade for the, the Kraychik Chimro. This is used for uh, imprinting, so very important beast. Uh, and it sells very quickly, okay? So that's one thing you can do. Uh, I mentioned all the masters for, for intermediate stuff. Once again, I'm, I'm trying to keep this video like simple, so if there's anything I, I missed, it's, it's not, you know, there's like so much stuff to do, right? It's just because I don't want to overwhelm you know, someone who's like getting to like the, the next stage, okay? So we, I think we covered all the basics here and, and that should be good for the video. So once again, uh, number one rule is get the awaken level eight, right? You start using some of the prophecies I talked about, make sure you use one of these, um, these map devices. Legion is like probably overall the best, uh, objectively the best one to use make sure you sell all the stuff price all your stuff correctly make sure you always add a master and then of course make sure you run a ton of masters. you get more masters right um so then you can add them to the maps okay so that that's it for the video um if you guys have any questions you can just ask me on my twitch stream okay okay thanks for watching my video okay bye